Okay, so this one's a bit of a weird one. It's a 145 beats per minute, 92, 93 hardcore style track. Now, there's something interesting on the piano here that I thought I should share. So if you look at the programming on the piano, and it is, um, I think I played it. Yeah, that doesn't look played at all. It probably was played and then cleaned up. Basically, other than the odd small velocity variation, there's not much going on that's clever here. Everything's hard quantized and maximum velocity for the most part. Okay, now look over here in the MIDI modifiers. One thing you can see, that I've obviously transposed this because when I played it, I played it in a different key, which is whatever. It had to fit with the other parts in the track. But what I'd like to draw your attention to is the random function here. So you see, you can pick an attribute to randomize. In this case, I've picked position, which is the timing of the notes, and velocity, which is the strength of the notes. With the velocity, I've put minimum to minus four, which means that there's a randomization negative range of four. And I've done the same thing with the timing. On the timing, we have a max value of three. That's three MIDI ticks. By the way, that should be something else of interest. If you look over at my preferences, I've maximized the MIDI display resolution. I've got my PPQ base set at 4000. PPQ is pulses per quarter, so it's the resolution of the MIDI itself. Basically the resolution of the MIDI timing. I can't even remember what the default is, but I've set that to a thousand ticks. So I have additional resolution here that I'm using to loosen up the piano. Now have a listen without that randomization. I mean, it still sounds okay, but it needed a bit of loosening up. I felt it was a bit stiff. I'm going to exaggerate that loosening. So instead of four on the velocity, I'll do eight. And instead of three on the position, I'll go up to 30. In fact, I'll move that around a bit. You see how it becomes kind of cluttered and it's almost like a live performance then. Although the point where I'm at now is obviously way too far. You see, the whole point of this is I noticed when you use a hardware keyboard for, say, a piano sound, you get a very different sound to using VSTs playing samples back. And one of the main reasons for that is the timing on the VSTs. It's so, so tight that it can sound a bit rigid. I mean, I want it to sound rigid to a point, but this trick allows me to control how much rigidity there is in the piano part. Something else of note, in Cubase anyway, what you can do is select the MIDI track and go up to the MIDI menu and do freeze MIDI modifiers. And what that does is it applies all of these MIDI modifiers. So that you see those values have all been neutralized. And now if I look inside the part, you'll see see there's that randomization every single note has a random velocity to a value of minus four and the ticks are up to three ticks out so you see it's loosened up those chords it's especially important with the chords because those can sound really clangy and percussive otherwise in a very fake way i've done that on records before and i've been like trying to figure out is it the eq is it the compression and it turns out actually to get a really nice sound you have to loosen up the midi timing a little bit this is Okay, so for this track, we had to take a little bit of a different approach because the piano sound is layered. Now, because it's layered, we couldn't put randomization on each individual layer. Otherwise, the layers kind of clutter against each other and they don't gel together as one unit, which is what we wanted. By the way, sometimes you do want the other style. Sometimes you do want, say, two piano layers to be drifting in and out of time note by note. But in this case, no, that wasn't what we wanted. So what I've done is I have a MIDI track here with the piano piano line that midi track doesn't have an output it's just a midi track with no instrument attached to it and then that is sent to three instruments so that's why this one midi track controls these three instruments the first instrument is the main sound which is my jar doubt piano patch sounds like this <laughs> Thank you. 
you get the idea. Now, when we first started working on this track, my computer actually died. Basically, my water cooling burst and got all over the motherboard and it was a big ugly mess. It caused me loads of grief. And that was actually on the day that we were supposed to be putting this track together. So what we did to try and salvage the day was work from my laptop. And on the laptop, I'm running OpenMPT, which is a tracker rather than a conventional DAW. If you can stand the brightness, here's the actual project that we were working on. You get the idea. Basically, what I did was drop that piano line into the tracker as a sample. Obviously, I'd created that piano in Cubase and then sampled it to throw in here. And what you might find interesting about this is all of the sounds that I took from Cubase, I ended up down sampling. I made them crusty inside the tracker. For example, this piano is 22 kilohertz. but it is the same jarred out patch from my piano pack. So back in Cubase, I went back to the original piano because I didn't really like the lo-fi sound anyway. And what I was able to do in here, specific to the MIDI track, is a random position of three. So that's a randomization on the MIDI note positions by three MIDI ticks. Now that obviously applies to all the tracks that receive that MIDI. However, I've got two random velocities. So for each of these layers, this is the main one, my jarred out piano patch. That's got a random velocity of minus eight. And then I'm using this one from the Roland Sound Canvas plugin. I've also got minus eight velocity on that. Now, because these are two separate tracks, their randomization is separate, which means that you get a little bit of variation between them, which I did want for the velocity. I didn't want for the timing. Hence, the timing is set to the master channel and the velocity is set per channel. And then I have a third layer, which is quite a subtle one. That kind of gives a width, a thickness, without having to necessarily rely too much on effects. Speaking of effects, let's have a look at the effects on the main piano part. So first of all, I have an EQ just cutting out some mud. Only a little bit, mind. Now the way that EQ band is positioned is specifically to deal with the fundamental frequencies of the chords. I'm effectively tilting the fundamental frequencies of the chords such that the lower notes have a slightly stronger fundamental than the higher notes. It helps to give it a rich, deep, full feeling. Now obviously it's quite subtle and it sounds louder with the effect bypass, but hopefully you get the idea. Then I have Decimal 2, which is a bit crusher. And I've only added some jitter, which is some randomization to the sample rate effectively. So that I found to be a bit more tasteful than blatantly pulling down the sample rate, which I did with the tracker. Then I've got a compressor, nothing too fancy there. Now, I felt that that brought out a little bit too much high frequencies, so I've used the multi-band envelope shaper to reduce high frequencies here without. And with. Again, these are very subtle, so if you're struggling to hear the difference before and after, don't worry. I'll exaggerate the effect, so here's if I boost this frequency. That's what I'm pulling down. I found that about minus three is the right area. By the way, part of the reason it's subtle is because I don't want it to sound like there's an effect there. I want this to sound natural. It's not supposed to sound like a modern production where everything's glitzy and synthy. It's supposed to sound like old school, really. And this was my method of smoothing things in the digital domain. I've got the same thing happening above 12 kilohertz as well. <laughs> No, 
nasty crusty stuff. Had I used just an EQ to remove that then it would have dulled the piano too much. In fact I probably did that before trying this. I wanted to retain some of that attack and that's the beauty of the envelope shaper. Then I've got Waves R bass just giving it a little bit of beef. Here's without. Here's with. very much warms it up. Then we have M Unison. This basically it's produced 50 copies of the piano and it randomizes the pitch a little bit, randomizes the formants a little bit and we have 50 copies. So I've only got this from 5% which is very low. Let me increase the level on that and you'll hear the difference. <laughs> very much like a posh chorus basically. Now to exaggerate the effect of that I've also put a side boost that's boosting just the stereo content. Now the interesting thing here is that I think without the M unison there isn't much if any stereo width, in fact we can test that. <laughs> No, it's dead mono. So what I've done effectively is reduce the effect of M unison in the center by boosting the side and then going into M unison and setting the dry wet, knowing that the side is twice as loud as the mid. Mid and side meaning the stereo difference information and the combined mono sum, the stuff that's dead center basically. Then a little bit of reverb. <laughs> Again, this is super, super subtle. I'll just play you the wet. That, I think, sounds like an old school 90s, 80s reverb, similar to, say, an Alesis or something like that that would have been used back in the day. But also the fact that I'm mixing it so quietly is very much uh, of the old school approach. For the layers, I've just got the same sort of EQ and compression on there very very little and the same sort of reverb setting in fact it was identical i probably just copied and pasted and for this one it's effectively chorus and dimming the high frequencies this is I hope you've liked the approach, sort of using modern tools to make an old school sound. That was kind of the concept behind these two tracks. Some of that is about overcoming the nature of modern technology and some of it's about recapturing the magic of the old technology without necessarily resorting to using the old technology. And I say resorting quite deliberately because using the old tech can be quite cumbersome with restoring settings and having to go out of the computer, record something, come back in, it can be a very laborious process trying to integrate that into a modern DAW because I'm normally working on modern music so for me to go back and do old style music with some degree of authenticity it does take a bit of extra thought how can I use the tools that I would normally use for current stuff and make it sound like something that would fit in with a record from 92 93 so that's how I've approached that obviously massive help from Vibesy DJ Vibes who wrote and produced the tracks with me he doesn't get involved so much in the sound design and mix down stuff I mean he's very vocal he's very opinionated about those things but that's more my domain but when it comes to ideas actually generating the music is very much a team effort so big boost out to Shane and that's all I've got time for today